Well, two weeks ago, Netball South Africa announced the squad that will be fighting for South Africa's glory at the Netball World Cup that takes place from the 28th of July until the 6th of August in Cape Town. Head coach Norma Plummer is addressing the media right now. Let's take you live there. Um, so I think from as far as that goes, the blend is good. And um, from the senior players who, the, who are there in that team, They'll certainly understand what's required when we get there in, in July. I know a lot of them are doing extra sessions away from their clubs as far as what they need to do from a, um, an S&C point of view or, you know, just agility um, and the build-up that they need maybe extra. They're putting in their time on that. And I have every confidence that um, everybody's going to turn up on the 14th of July ready to actually have a very good camp prior to the to the World Cup. Thank you very much, Coach. Uh, Kolile? Hi, Coach. Uh, Kolile from Ms. Uh, just looking at uh, the, the makeup of our pool and uh, the, the countries that uh, we'll start against, uh, do you feel that uh, during the preparation so far you've had um, enough tests against maybe teams that play a similar style and like the ladies are exposed uh, to whatever we'll face in the pool or do you still feel that you still need to do a bit more in in the remaining weeks oh well look when we get there we'll certainly be um looking at um you know, our opposition um, quite thoroughly. And of course, you have to understand that a lot of the players internationally play here in Australia. So I've got my eye, eye on them all the time. In fact, there's something like six or seven Jamaicans are here. Now we hit Jamaica on our third game. Now last time they actually underestimated at the World Cup in 2019, but I'm sure they won't be this time. And they have actually really knuckled down and made sure that um, they pulled it together for Commonwealth Games because they did get the the uh, silver medal. Everyone had tipped that they'd actually get, get the gold, but um, anyway, that didn't happen. But they are silver medalists and we will have to do a lot of homework, um, which I've already been doing and I have already have all the cut-ups on those players. And um, it's up to myself and... Um, uh, the, the other two coaches now to put that together on court and make sure we go out with um, a very good game plan against them. It's going to be tough, but no no doubt I like a challenge, always have, and I think our girls are, are going to give this a, a pretty big nudge, to be honest with you. I think um, I'm, I'm really excited with the group that we have. Thank you very much, Coach. Um, Ryan, you're up next. Uh, good evening, Coach. Hi, Ryan. Uh, uh, this World Cup marks a historical moment for South Africa and Africa. How do you feel about hosting this moment? Oh, look, it's fantastic to have it in your home country. I know I've been part of that from an Australian point of view, and there's nothing better because you have the have the crowd behind you, um, and certainly I'm, I know South Africans will be behind the Proteas because, you know, even at um, the Quad Series in January where we were a little bit undone, but after game one when New Zealand actually got us a little bit, uh, we weren't on the pace, but the next night we got, we got England. So, you know, the build-up of the crowd certainly helps. I think they ran a very good Quad Series and I, um, I have every confidence that um, everything will be in place for the South African team to be able to stand up and, and really take on the rest of the world at this at this World Cup with a lot of backing from Nepal, South Africa. Thank you very much. And um, Vuyo as the final one for the round. Thanks, Mercy. Good day, Coach Vuyo from Newsroom Africa. Um, Coach, 
just following up on that, us as hosting this tournament, and of course, South Africans would want to see the pro tiers going on and possibly winning this tournament. Having been at the back end of that with Australia, taking you back to 2007 and 11, I wanted to find out when you look at the team that you selected now, comparing to the ones that were winning teams back in, in 07 and 11 that you were part of, what are some of the similar traits that you are seeing in the pro tiers team that those two teams possessed at the time who then went on and won? Are there similar traits that you are seeing in the pro tiers now? Or well, there is, but it's, it's a total different ball game. Um, Nepal, South Africa, you know, you have the Telcom series, but you don't have the um, SSN competition in Australia, which is really the NBA of Nepal. And so the standard there is actually higher. I've got to be honest about that. It's much higher. So, um, uh, but I've found that your girls here, in, like they're in South Africa, they commit so much and they also take on everything that we give them. Now, we've got a very good team and the blend of the team on the way we've selected it. We've got, you know, like five goalers that we can interchange around, you know, good shooters, good good workers out the front at goal attack. We've got a centre court that we can interchange, like five across there that actually work, you know, uh, double positions. And that's always important. You want to be, don't want to have a player that's only just sitting in one position that we can interchange if we had any injuries or anything like that, that we don't lose momentum. And then we go down to the back line, the same thing, a couple of really tall good, strong um, goalkeepers and movers out the front at goal defence with a wing defence that's absolutely on fire at the moment with Jante. And so we look at all those things and we've put the blend together to make sure that we can um, interchange the team around as, as uh, required. And also if someone's not having a good day on court, you don't sit back and just let them play. Your responsibility as a coach is to make sure that you're working hard for the win. And so it's um, always um, a terrific position to have alternative players on the bench that you will be able to interchange and not lose momentum. That is one of the major things. So I'm pretty happy on where we sit with those players at the moment. Thank you very much, Coach. Um, just before we start taking the second round of um, questions, Coach, can I just ask you just to move the screen forward? Uh, uh, just tilt your screen a bit because it's cutting your chin off. No, I think it's uh, this um, sound situation. How's that? Uh, let's quickly check. Um, much better. So that's much better now. Thank you. All right, cool. So um, um, another round of questions. Uh, I'm noting you, Andy. Um, noting Kifilwe, Arnold, and and Pessy. Uh, we'll start with you, um, Andy. Um, thanks, Nusi. Um, hi, Coach. Hope you're doing well. Um, going to be a bit mischievous, Nusi. I know you said one question, but they are very closely related, so I'll try to band them together. First one, when can we expect to hear the final 12 and three reserves? Because obviously we now are working with a squad of 15. And then secondly, having mentioned that the competition, the SSN, is a lot um, tighter than what you would have seen in the Telcom League, what's the plan that's been put in place to just make sure that there isn't too much of a disparity between the overseas-based players and, and the local players um, that you have at your disposal? Thanks. Well, I, I think I said before that um, we've got um, the players in South Africa doing extra and... Um, you know, I've, I've got to take it on face value that they will do that. Uh, they've been giving those programs and we certainly have a strength and conditioning coach that's backing all that up. Um, we have a medical person that's backing all of that up. And, you know, I think from a, um, a player point of view, if you don't do the work, you don't get a game. It's as simple as that. So the players are very aware that I'm I'm fully over that sort of thing. You don't turn up to a World Cup half done. I expect them to be at that level. And, you know, 
replacements can happen right up to the last minute before the first game. So, you know, I, but I, I'm pretty sure I've got a, a very dedicated group that we're selected who are so keen. Um, the second part of your question is, um, I'll leave that to Netball South Africa. They will do the announcement when it suits them, not, not me. Yeah, in the Western Cape, they say the Gies is on. The excitement certainly is happening as we get closer and closer to uh, the Netball World Cup.